The Stuart 7A model steam plant, part 30, testing the pump using live steam. The video on Patreon is a bit late today, that's mainly because I have just had another job brought in, and you'll see more about that tomorrow. I've fitted the pump back onto the steam plant. Notice that the hand pump isn't working too well, and it looks like the balls have stuck. Just to make sure I've tightened every one of the union nuts, I've got some compressed air in the boiler, and I'm just testing the connections. You can hear the pump running in the background. This still needs a little bit of adjustment, and there's no time like the present. Ah, that's better. It's running much more evenly, end to end. As you can see, the waterside gland badly needs packing. But I'm not bothered about that. In this video, I need to find out whether the pump works under steam. And more importantly, whether the pump works under steam without leaking badly at the steam cylinder end. This is a small syringe and I'm using it to remove the water that's pouring out of the gland at the water end. I can't really adjust this gland very well. If I tighten it up too much, then the piston doesn't move. So really, I'm going to take it out, remove all the gland packing and start again. I don't really think there's very much gland packing in this anyway, but I'll find out about that in another video. The problem that I have with the pump at the moment, apart from the problems I've already had, is that it's sharing a feed to the boiler with the hand pump. I'm going to change this and give it its own feed, because there's a spare check valve bush at the other end of the boiler. Time to raise some steam. The first thing to do is to fill the gas tank. This is better done outdoors. After moving the gas canister to a safe location, I hold a naked flame over the chimney, and as you've just seen and heard, the gas is now lit. This burner is a bit of a howler. I'm going to look at this in another episode. I think the jet's probably too big. The first thing to do though before everything warms up is to fill the displacement lubricator. This is the one for the pump. I'm filling it with steam oil and I've replaced the cap. The next thing to do is to fill the one on the engine. This video is all about finding out whether the pump leaks or doesn't leak and whether my wet or dry sandpaper gaskets were successful. I can live with the gland leaking, I'll cover that separately, but I can't resist giving the engine a run. So anticipating running the engine, I'm giving all the moving parts a drop of lubricating oil. This is not the same stuff that I put in the displacement lubricator. This is lubricating oil for moving parts. The stuff that I put in the lubricators is steam oil. It's very thick. I know that I mention this frequently, but I often get people asking me, what type of oil do you use? And anticipating some more questions, no, do not use motor oil. Well, the good news is, the pump's starting to move on its own once I open the valve. With the engine's drain cocks open, I'm taking this opportunity to rotate the flywheel and pump any water out of the cylinder. After which the engine runs beautifully, as always. The boiler's flue is howling, but you can't have everything. I'll leave the engine running and go back to the pump. Here I'm tapping the pump steam cylinder because the shuttle piston is sticking only slightly at one end of the travel, and after a quick tap it runs fine. And what's more, it's pumping water into the boiler, which is always a good thing. Generally speaking, once you get this type of pump to run well under steam, it continues to do so. Because the pump is working fine now, and the gaskets are not leaking steam at all, I'll have a look and see what size burner jet is in the gas burner. And it's a number 10, and number 10s are a bit too big for this. When I light the burner on the bench, it gives a good flame. But then again, when you put it in the flue, it's a different story. Inside a closed flue, it doesn't get enough oxygen. In this clip, I'm refitting the burner into the boiler, and I've pulled out the jet as far as I can, in an attempt to create more turbulence over the venturi holes. It's not howling quite as bad, but the smell from the chimney isn't good. And the problem is, turning down the gas doesn't work either, because what happens is, owing to the jet being too big, there's insufficient pressure and therefore even less oxygen over the fire. It even set off my carbon monoxide alarm. Nothing new there then. In this clip I'm hand starting the pump because I've just raised steam again and it's to get rid of the condensate in the steam cylinder. There's no longer any water in the tank, that's why it's going so fast. So I thought I'd run it really fast just to make sure it didn't break. I always test run things at a very high speed 
Generally speaking, if they work at this speed, they're OK. And yes, this one works at warp speed as well. I have to say that these small Stuart pumps are really difficult and very fiddly to make them run properly. But once they do, they tend to run like that for quite a long time. In the last high speed run I really turned up the steam pressure. I put some water in the tank and once again it's actually pumping water into the boiler, so that's OK. The only problem is you can only really run the pump when you want to pump water into the boiler. I'm going to fit a water bypass valve and that way I'll be able to see the water going back to the tank. I thought it was a good idea to see how much water this pump is pumping and it's pumping a surprisingly large amount. And no matter how hard I squeeze the end of the pipe, I cannot stop the flow. In the past I've had some of these pumps where they leak so badly at the steam cylinder end, the amount of water they managed to pump could not keep up with the amount of steam that was being evaporated by the pump running. This pump is not like that. The glands need packing and it needs to be run in. It was very tight to start with. During this video I've been making fine adjustments to the travel of the valve. And although the gland at the water end is leaking water, it's running very well indeed. In the next video in the series, I intend to pipe the pump properly with a water bypass valve to a separate check valve. And also in the next video, I will show the packing of the glands at both ends of the piston rod. My wet or dry sandpaper gaskets have worked perfectly, but don't forget if you're using gaskets like this, you do need to use some boss white or similar sealant. But don't use too much, otherwise you will clog up the ports. And that's about it for this episode. I'd just like to say as always, stay safe and well. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.